All right, so today we're going to be making this stock report using PowerPoint. And as you can see, it's got a couple of different visuals here. One's a table, one is a, a series of plots that we've plotted for Apple, Facebook, Google, and NVIDIA's stock prices. So let's get started. All right. So what you need to do is you need to get this project set up if you haven't done so already. Um, there is a uh, weekly R tips and there's some instructions in there to get this GitHub repo set up. You're going to want to pull the latest GitHub, make sure you're up to date. And when you pull, um, you'll be able to have this uh, free R tips and we're on the third R tip, which is PowerPoint slide deck automation. So I have this file opened up right here. Um, it's the automate PowerPoint.R and actually I'm going to close out of my PowerPoint because we're going to be overwriting that as I run through this. So um, if you haven't done so already, uh, pull this file open. It's the O3 Automate PowerPoint and uh, make sure you have your little outline over here and, you're, and we're gonna go down through this together. So automating PowerPoint slides, it's super easy with this package called Officer. So we're gonna load Officer, we're gonna load Flex Table. Flex Table allows us to build the table that goes into our PowerPoint. We're going to load Tidyverse for data wrangling. Tidyquant, this is my R package. I've built that, and that's for accessing financial data and doing financial data manipulations. And then we're going to load TimeTK, which is another package I've built for time series data and plotting and, and uh, all sorts of time series data wrangling. Next, we're going to move into this section here for data. So we're going to use Tidyquant to pull in some stock data. And you can add in any stock symbols you want here. Um, and we're going to use this function called tqget. And what this is going to do is it's going to take your symbols and, and we pipe it into tqget and I give it a date range here. You can leave that out and it'll just do the last 10 years by default. But when I run this, you can see control enter and what it's going to do is pull in that data. So it's got all of the symbols in here, all the dates, the open, high, low, close, volume, and the adjusted price. We're going to be primarily using the adjusted price and just note it's a daily frequency. So I'm going to save this as stock data underscore tibble. And now I've got my data saved. So you'll see it up here in your environment. And actually, let me um, empty my environment just so it's clean. And I'll rerun this so we have it here. OK, I've got my stock data right here. Cool. Um, once you have that stock data, we're ready to do some data wrangling. And I teach this in the DS4B 101-R course. And this is using a package called dplyr. So we start with our raw data. It looks something like this. It's 1676 by 8. Um, so that's how many rows and how many columns this data frame has. We need to select down. So I'm just going to select the symbol, date, and adjusted columns. When I do that, I get something that looks like this. Um, it's now only three columns. Then I'm going to group by the symbol. So I now have four groups in here. I grouped on Apple, Google, Facebook, and NVIDIA. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to summarize the data. So I'm just taking the last price, so the, the most recent price, and dividing it by the first price for each group. And I'm doing it at a, uh, a, a distance of 7 from the first. I'm doing it at a distance, um, or excuse me, the last seven, 7, a length of 7 from the last price a length of 30 from the last price. And that's what, what this first and tail are doing. So I'm grabbing the tail, the last uh, seven elements, and then I'm grabbing the first one of the last. So it's gonna be seven, uh, a distance of seven days from the last adjusted price, a distance of 30 days from the last adjusted price, and that's for month, um, a distance of 90 from the last price, and that's the quarter, and then a distance of 365 and then the full distance is just the first adjusted price. So what this does is when I run this, it gives us a table that you might see in an investor or portfolio meeting where they've got the symbols and they've got the performance by week, uh, by month, by quarter, by year, and by all. And these are the returns. So this is actually a percentage return from weekly, from monthly, from the last month, from the quarter, a year, and so on. Okay, I'm going to save that as my stock returns tibble, and this will actually be the uh, data that we use to put into our table that was in that, um, that that was in the PowerPoint. Next, we're going to format. So we're going to take our raw data, 
um, and our stock returns table, and we're going to turn it into a stock plot and a stock return table. So the first one is actually um, really easy. So the plot, we just take our raw data and I'm group it by symbol. So I've got four groups in here, and then I'm going to use this function from time TK. It's called summarize by time. And I'm going to take the adjusted price and just take the average by week. Looks something like this. And then what I'm going to do is use this plot time series function, and it's going to plot the date versus the adjusted for each one of these groups. And it produces something that looks like this. So this is our Apple, Facebook, Google, NVIDIA. Um, and then I'm going to save this as stock plot. So it's actually going to be in my environment right now. So it's the stock plot right here, and that's the visualization. And this is using a package called ggplot2. I teach that in my 101 course. Um, it's in week four of the 101 course. Okay, um, next what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my stock returns table, which looks like this, and this has uh, been summarized. We did the data wrangling up here. Um, and then what I'm going to do is just format it for my flex table. So that's going to be the other table that goes into the plot. First, I rename all of these to capital um, to be capitalized. And then I'm going to take this the, all the numerics in here. I'm going to do mutate if is numeric. And, um, and we can see that we've got several double, that stands for double DBL. Um, these are all of our numeric columns. And if they're numeric, I'm going to apply this function called scales percent to them. And what that's going to do is format them as percentages. So they look something like this. And then I'm going to convert it to a flex table. And a flex table looks something like this over here. I know it might be a little tough to see, but it'll show up better once we put it into the um, end of the PowerPoint. So I'm going to save that as stock table. And I now have my stock table up here. And that's actually a flex table. So I've got the ggplot. I've got the flex table. Now I have everything I need to make this PowerPoint deck. PowerPoint, we're using the officer package. And what we're going to do is initialize a PowerPoint using read PowerPoint. And this just creates a uh, empty PowerPoint. You can see it's a list of zero here. Uh, if I hit control and enter on the doc, it's a PowerPoint document with zero slides. And it's got um, some available layouts and associated masters. And it gives you a little information about it. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a slide. So as soon as I add a slide, um, I now have a slide in here. I have one slide. And what I'm going to do is start adding content to that slide. So I'm first going to add a title, which I do here. So this is adding a value of stock report and a location of title. So when I do that, um, control enter, um, it's still just modifying this first slide. Then I'm going to add uh, to that document that I've created a, the stock table. And I'm going to add that in the position of the left position, pH location left. So when I run this, um, it just adds that stock table to the left position. And then on the right location, I'm going to add the stock plot. So I've got the table in there already. Now I just need the plot. And then the last thing I do in order to write this, I just print that document with a target equal to uh, the location that I want to put it and the name of the file. So I'm going to name it in my files. I'm going to place it in the O3 PowerPoint slide deck folder. And then I'm going to name it stock report dot PowerPoint or dot PPTX. So I hit control and enter and it overwrites this. Um, and I could name it something else just to show you that it is actually overwriting. So I just created a stock report too. And if I click on that and open it up in PowerPoint, I've got my stock report with the flex table on the left and the ggplot visualization on the right. So now I've just automated PowerPoint. If you like this video, don't forget to sign up for the Tuesday free R Tips newsletter. You can just click this uh, link here and it'll send you here. Put your email address in and every Tuesday you'll get these videos, you'll get the code and you'll get the tutorial right in your inbox.